Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, yeah, this is, as Matt said, it's a little bit different today. Um, we are in this series called It's Complicated, and it's a series uh, where we've talked about the issues of love and marriage and dating and romance. And, you know, one of the big things we've tried to say through this whole series is that, you know, it's important, it's more important to become the right person than find the right person. That, that are you becoming the person that the person that you're looking for is looking for? And we truly try to stress that through this, uh, through this series. Um, but we wanted to talk today specifically about something that the church doesn't often talk about, and that is the topic of singleness. Um, I would say, and I have to say, that we do probably a pretty lousy job in terms of the church. Um, case in point, when I was a, a seminarian, um, I was kind of at the end of my seminary career. I was a pastoral intern at a church, and um, one of the singles of our church came to the pastor and said, you talk about marriage, you do stuff for the teenagers, for the children, you concentrate relatively little on us. You talk very little to us. So he just got to thinking about that, and uh, this was back in the 80s, and he came to me and he said, you know, you're done in a couple of months with us, but what if you, you came on here as the uh, pastor to singles here in this church? And uh, back in the 80s, I wouldn't do it like we would do it, you know, we did it then, and it worked then. We wouldn't do the same today in that singles ministry, but it was something, it was an eye-opening experience for me, and I was, it was a privilege for me to do that. So we wanted to take this opportunity today to really talk about this important topic. What does it mean to be, not a single Christian, but a Christian? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I finally, <laughs> I'm getting it. See, after all these years, Christian who's single, I want to introduce this panel. Ryan, I feel like I'm upstaging you here, brother. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, let, uh, yeah, and I'll start with you, okay? So to my right here is Ryan Gagne. Ryan is, um, and these are all obviously single people up here with me right now. Ryan is the station manager for the Q 90.1, which is a Christian radio station here in our area. Some excite, yeah, woo, right? Good stuff. Uh, and there's some really good stuff happening I can't share yet, but I, I, we can share in a couple months. Resist. Resist the urge. I'm so excited. I get to serve on the board with this guy, and he's a good friend, and um, it's great having him here today. Um, next around the circle here is Lynn Ferraco. Uh, Lynn and I had the privilege to minister for how many years doing divorce care and together. And on Thursday nights, we were there, and what a hoot that was together doing that. And uh, I, I loved every every minute of it. It was, it was hard at times because, you know, there's a lot of emotion involved in that. But um, I, it, I, and I, I loved working with Lynn on that. It was so much fun. Um, and Lynn is one of our overseers here in this church too, somebody I respect highly and greatly. So welcome her too to, uh, to this. <laughs> Kathleen, um, I could kind of say that I'm, I'm your because I'm on the missions board. You're the president. I'm the president of the missions door board, and she's one of the campus ministers for Campus Ambassadors, which is a, uh, an arm of missions door. She's a campus minister, um, and Joanne and I support you. And we love supporting you and what you're, you're doing just a good egg. in ministry. Great. No, I, I, I mean, so, uh, so this is, so w welcome her as well, would you? I want to introduce this um, whole subject. We're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a scripture verse in a second here, but um, I, I can't resist uh, this, something that a farmer once said to me. So you, you kind of grew up in farm country too, right? So you can, you know, New York farmers, gotcha. you know, you understand what I'm talking about here. So, so this friend of the family, Ken Leeton, once came up to me and he said, you know something, Doug, uh, marriage... Marriage is like a screen door with flies on it. There are flies on the outside that want to get in. 
and flies on the inside that want to get out. <laughs> uh, okay, that doesn't, that's not necessarily the right thinking about marriage, you know. Um, but, but I want to read from a verse uh, to the Philippians. And I want you to kind of think about this um, for a moment here. And I'm going to read this. And um, yeah, and then I'm going to say one other thing. Um, Paul's in jail. He's writing to this congregation, and they're a great congregation. They're probably one of the finer congregations in the, uh, in the Roman world at the time, one of the gr good, great churches of the Bible, of Philippians. But nevertheless, he says this to them. He says, I have learned, Paul's saying, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Just mull on that for a minute. Content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Okay, I just want to turn it over to you. I want to stop talking here. What does that mean to you guys? Being a Christian who is single. You're the smart one here, so. <laughs> go, Lynn, go. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily the smartest, but. Um, I think that Paul is acknowledging that life is really hard. Um, he's in jail, so he's experiencing it, but all of us know firsthand that life is really hard, whether it's health or finances or relations or our jobs, um, it's just not easy. And I don't think that, um, and I, I'll speak from my own experience, but you know, I'm up here, I look probably, you know, I'm speaking to you and I don't have it all together and I certainly didn't have it all together a number of years ago, that's for sure. Um, but the only way I'm able to speak about any of it and any of the brokenness and any of the failure and the absolute despair and heartache that I've experienced is through Christ. Hmm. Um, it's only through a relationship with him and sometimes going at him with my fists flailing, but um, still nonetheless a loving relationship with him. Hmm. And that's something to point out too, is that each of your experiences of singleness is a little different as opposed in the same reality is that there are many different yeah. kinds of being single. So that's, I actually wrote down uh, this morning as I was coming here, I've, I've made a list of a bunch of friends on the top of my paper. And there's so many that I didn't even write down that I thought of after that. If you have met one single person, you've met one single person. <laughs> Like each of us has different experiences, but we are even just a super small cross section of backgrounds of, oh, why are you single? Or do you want to be single? Do you want to be married? Like there's a broad, broad experience there. And so I think that is super important when we enter this topic too. And I think, you know, looking at this verse, you know, and just kind of thinking about, you know, my journey in this is a journey that I'm very content with. Mm so much so that I can't think of it any other way, mm. yeah. if that makes sense. And I know that's not for everybody, but, you know, I think about just being satisfied in what God has given today, right? You know, everybody has a gift from God of today. How are we going to use today? Yeah. And how are we going to live out the purpose we have today? And not to say that, you know, when it comes to like relationships, you know, people have goals and dreams and aspirations with that. But I think, you know, just talking about contentment, where are you today? Are you ready to say, okay, God, this is the day you've given me, and I know you have purpose for me. Yeah. How am I gonna live that out? And so I think for me, that's just a big aha moment, mm -hmm. you know, and just saying, okay, God, thank you for this incredible day that I get to get out of bed and just do life and do it to the fullest and be content with that. Yeah. And um, yeah, so. That's and great. just be thankful, I think. That's great. I think the thing that jumped out to me with this verse is that it's something that can be learned. 
Like, and like you said, Lynn, this is such a beautiful lead in. Like, this is true for anything. This is true for my financial situation. This is true for my station in life, whether I'm single or married or divorced or widowed or what have you. This is true for, oh, like there are other things that I'm groaning about and I wish that were different. There can be, this can actually be learned by degrees. And so I might not be where you are yet, but by practicing this every day, I could get where you are. That's you know? such a great point what you just said there because this doesn't come naturally, does it? For anyone, any of us. We have to learn this, yeah. Um, I've got a number of questions for, uh, for you guys, and I know you might have some questions, so I'm gonna ask you, if you've got a question for them, we're, we wanna give you the opportunity, so why don't you throw the number up here. You can text your question to this number, and uh, then they're gonna be texting it to me up here, and um, We'll put you guys right on the spot <laughs> with those questions. Um, nothing too hard. <laughs> nothing too hard. Let me ask you the first one. Let me give you a hard one. What are the challenges? How, you know, what, what are the struggles of living as a Christian who is single? Nothing. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> not, not claiming IRS dependence. <laughs> Doing your taxes? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Mo moving furniture when I'm by myself. <laughs> okay, that's another one. Yeah. 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 I think, I mean, honestly, there are some that are just super practical. Yes. Like, it sounds silly, but moving furniture by myself. <laughs> or, like, this, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. Like, marrieds have built in helpers for everyday tasks. Like, oh, we've got to drop the car off. Okay, I'll pick you up. Like, I don't have a built in person to just manage life ta life's tasks with. Yeah. that feels like, I don't know, you're kind of walking around with like half the resources, mm -hmm. both practically of like, oh, hey, let's move the couch today, or oh, hey, let's, let's drop the car off. But even half, half life's resources with, oh, like we don't have enough money to buy a house, or you don't have enough, like, like some of those things are super practical, but it's worth mentioning that, yeah, you're, you're kind of, you've got different levels of both on the simple things and the more complex things, you've got mm. half the resources. Mm. I think just dealing with external pressures sometimes, I think, is a big challenge. Um, you know, thinking about, like, having a lot of my friends who are married, you know, and sometimes when you want to have that community, it can be challenging because, you know, I've got to check with my wife or I've got to check with my husband or I've got to see if the kids are good, you know, and that kind of thing. And, and where I'm more of, like, a free spirit, I'm like, hey, I just want to go out and let's get a few people to go out for dinner. Well, it's not that easy you know, for someone who may be married necessarily. So I think some of those pressures, um, I think family pressures can be a, a big thing too. Saying, when are you gonna find someone? Or when are you gonna? Okay, so us married people can make you feel uncomfortable at times by those kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm kind of used to it. So I'm like, but you know, my response would be, especially with family, is just, I'm good right now, I'm yeah. good. Um, and I think, you know, the final thing is societal pressures. Yeah. You know, what a society define you know, it's like everybody has to have somebody or everybody has to do this and everybody has to have a relationship and fall in love. And you know what? Those are all pressures that I think I see and yeah. I experience. But I just, I think over the years, I'm just like, it's all good. Yeah. I think maybe we talked about this in our, in some of our, we did Zoom preps and I was always in my car. <laughs> so it's very strange. But I think something that makes me think of Ryan is that, uh, I'm going to throw a big word out there, but and I don't mean to sound smart or pompous, but basically we have to realize that our American culture is so, so hyper individualistic, which what that has done is that it has placed all kinds of expectations for our needs for intimacy or to be known or to be cared about on one relationship, which is the romantic relationship. And what that does is that says, oh, basically like you should get all your needs met there. So if you don't have that, there's no ready-made space in American culture where we would expect you to be known and cared about and yeah. And so I think that's a huge, huge thing. I got two questions that just came in and I think are good ones. I'm gonna ask the second one first. This is gonna shoot me down as the singles pastor here. Have singles groups at churches ever helped? <laughs> never been to one. I actually have never either. I avoid them. <laughs> I mean, what have they helped? Like, are, are you treating singles groups as like the to be married 
like well, corral? Or like well, what? it's true because a singles group can almost become that place that segregates our singles off to this yeah. entity over there. And, and I'm not sure that that's what you want. I mean, that's what we did back in the 80s. And it was, it was successful and it was enjoyable and fun. And we had a Monday night gathering and it was popular. But I'm not sure if I'd do that now. You know, I don't know that's the way to go. Well, especially too, like if we're thinking holistically, like are we talking about singles in their 20s? Yeah. Who all have the same, like, yeah, let's go all do the same thing. Or are we talking about a broad spectrum of an 18-year-old who's like, yeah, I want to be in a relationship. A 25-year-old who's like, yeah, I want to be in a relationship, I want to be married someday. A 30-year-old, a 40-year-old, a 50-year-old, a 70-year-old who's just lost their husband or wife or is a longtime widow or widower. Like, so this is broad. This is really yeah. broad. And I think if, even then, if we clearly define, oh, this is what it means to be a single in this little 18 to 25-year-old bracket, none of us would qualify. <laughs> Here's a really good question. I think this is um, fundamental here. Do you find that it's easier to have a close relationship with Jesus without a spouse or kids getting in the way? That's a great question. Lynn's the only one that can speak to this because Ryan and I have never been married or never had kids. So, yeah. Um, I I always, this is my life, that the Lord has kept me grounded and my kids have kept me accountable. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I couldn't do, I couldn't raise kids. um, And I I know that when I was married, you know, I needed the Lord just as much. And you can't compartmentalize your relationship with Jesus to one part of your life. And um, so, no, I don't think it's easier. I suppose it's different for, for different people, too. Yeah. It's kind of going back to what you said is every... Yeah, and I think that's super important for, uh, for every, all of us in the church, right? It's not an, this or that is better. It's different things are going to give you different challenges and different opportunities in each space. Because on the one hand, you could say, oh, I have less time if I have kids, which is true. I've got dear friends that are like, I need a nap. But on the flip side, I've also, as a single, been able to be around them with their small children. And I see more of Jesus in some of those interactions that I'm like, man, that's such a beautiful picture. Yeah. Too. So it's not, we can't, we got to get rid of these dichotomies of like, this is better or that's better. I think that if I could make one clarification, so, and this is going to your point, Ryan, about external pressures, about being married. And I've had similar situations where family or friends have said, you've been single for so long. Like, don't you miss being married or being in a relationship? And, um, and it's not that uh, I, whether I miss it or not is not the point I'm trying to make here. The point is, you know, my life is simple now, but it's simple because my kids are grown up. It's simple because um, uh, my finances are in a little bit better shape. It's simple because I'm older and my walk with the Lord has gotten stronger. Um, so I would say that my life is simpler now, so I'm, I'm freer to at the promptings, like I can hear them, there's not so much distraction, and I can move a lot quicker. But easier or not, I don't, I, I don't think so. And to your point, it's not better or worse. Or yeah, I think some of that is stage of life too. Absolutely, multiple things. Mm-hmm. Multiple things, yeah. One of the things, you know, we talked about challenges. One of the things we didn't, or you didn't bring up, and I'll, I'll, let me bring it up. How about the issue of loneliness? You could be married and lonely too. So let's just say that. Because you could be in a marriage that, where you're not connecting. And so married people can ex- still experience loneliness. Yeah. But there is this kind of built-in situation here with being single that, okay, you, you could experience moments of loneliness. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we all deal with that, no matter if you are married or single. Right. Um, I think for someone, I don't, necessarily deal with that you know regularly or whatever but i think if i it's funny too because after this i have to MC a wedding today <laughs> and so so it's one of those deals where you know going to weddings you see so many couples and people are happy and dancing together and then you kind of get that feeling like oh that would be nice but then 
an hour later, I'm like, okay, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think there's moments where, you know, it goes to what you were saying. I think everybody's situation is different. And so loneliness, you know, I think sharing life experiences or moments in the moment, like something you celebrate, it's like, oh, I got to, oh, I don't have a spouse to tell. Or, you know, if you're going through a hard time, it's like, oh, you know, somebody's not there to hear it. I would have to call like a friend or something. Um, but in general, it's yeah. not, not too bad. Yeah, I think the first thing that I thought of was that to be lonely is a human thing. You know, like it, it, this, is the, this is the result of, fall, of the fall. This is part of the effect of sin, uh, not just our own individual sin, but the fact that we live in a sinful world. We're, we just, we long for something that we don't have, um, which is perfect deep communion. Um, and yeah, man, so many thoughts. I think, I think especially because of what I mentioned earlier about hyper individualism in America, we are, we are prone to loneliness because we we get the Disney fairy tale that says, oh, if I find the one, I'll never be lonely, you know, um, and all this stuff. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a piece of it. I think another piece of it, specifically as a single person, is because we don't live in a more communal society there is no one that holds my story. Like there's no one that is able to uh, see the highs and the lows and to be able to reflect back my story when I come home and I'm like, hey, this was really great, or oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated about this, this, and this. There's, there's not that natural, oh hey, but remember when you said, or remember when this happened, or you know, that kind of a thing. Um, I think those are some very poignant places that that shows up. Um, I think this is also where just if I could just offer, this is where it's almost easier to find camaraderie with other singles because they get it, you know? Um, sometimes, sometimes my married friends aren't as aware of that part of it. Um, and I think quite honestly, for me, the way that I can most jump into this question is super early pandemic, like two sets of friends left the state. <laughs> and like, I felt that loneliness super acutely because I didn't have my even my community that I had built was like peace yeah. <laughs> it's like shoot <laughs> um so I think yeah like it it, it rears its head for sure yeah, it does. yeah I I would say that uh similarly that loneliness desperation those feeling alone that's all real yeah. and no matter you know whatever situation people are in those are those are real um real places where, where you, there are seasons sometimes. And um, you can't dismiss them with, you know, a few Bible verses and be on, you know, be on your way. It's, it's a time. And sometimes the only way you can get through those seasons are to get through them and to come out the other side. Um, you know, I feel like loneliness and aloneness and uh, that feeling of being abandoned has been following me around for most of my life. My parents died when I was very, you know, much younger. And um, so it, you know, I f used to feel like I had this big gaping hole wound that was just bleeding all over the place all the time. And uh, it, thankfully, that it's not like that anymore. But... Um, I will share that, you know, still, uh, sometimes around the holidays, and I have family, I, I have kids, I have good friends, you know, like all of us, but sometimes there's this very deep place that is still very lonesome, and I don't think it has anything to do with uh, being single, um, and I know that now that those are the deepest times, those are the deepest places where God still has a lot of work to do. Um, and maybe when I get to heaven, you know, then the work will be complete. Um, but until then, I know that that's, he's got a lot of work to do still, so. Mm. I want to pick up on that, what you just said, Lynn. But, but let me first say, what I notice in the three of you, um, all of these people up here have been so much into community through the years. And, and, and part of me is I know your stories a little bit about what you've done to insert yourself into community. So you've not isolated 
and, and that's huge. Um, I don't know your personality types, introvert, ex, extrovert, but I, I know at least that you've all been a part of communities. You've been in small groups. Well, and, and just real quickly, that wasn't something that was like, oh, boom, it just got created and I just had to like consume. Like I remember my very first small group here at Faith, it was just my name on the paper and Matt and Ashley Rich thought I was an 85 year old woman because <laughs> they didn't know who I was. And it was, you know, 20s and 30s or whatever. And they were like all worried and I was all worried. I'm like, I'm going to get shanked as I walk into this apartment building. Like what's going to happen? <laughs> and it took like, like weeks and weeks and months and months of yeah. continuing to go before real relationships got built. Yeah, yeah. That was a good group, though, wasn't it? Boy, yeah, they're, guys, yeah. they're a good crew. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to ask this next question here that came from some of you. Wow, there's a lot of good questions here. I may not get to all of them. Um, someone has asked, do any of you feel married to Jesus? So let me just say, isn't that a great way to put it? Um, I w- the question I had was, which is kind of, I like this one better. What, what does being in a relationship with Jesus, how does being in a relationship with Jesus transform um, how, how you experience or what you think about singleness? Or simply put, <laughs> how do you feel about being married to Jesus? <laughs> Talk about that. What does that mean? Yeah, um, well, I mean, super random thoughts. Hope they make sense all together. But like, man, oh, so good. I think, yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a, the one person's question that wrote that in. I've started to think about that a little bit in that way. And I've actually contemplated like, yeah, like people, like what would it look like to have a wedding ring to Jesus? Or, or you know, like what does that look like? What does that mean? Um, so I, maybe I'll circle back to that after we're all done. I don't know. But there's a few things that I pulled out when you had written us this question, Doug. And, you know, how does, how does being in a relationship with Jesus transform how I think about singleness? I think in, in culture, singleness is you are the extra that you are. Maybe you're not... In my case, like I'm, I'm female, and so like, oh, you're not pretty enough to attract a man, or something. Like, you're there's some failing in your biology or your achievement, or like it's it's a marker of status, right? Um, or a marker of normalcy. Where I think in you look at Jesus through the Gospels and his preference or his deference even to people that don't fit the quote unquote status quo is stunning, and you look at like for me, the way that the way that Jesus, he the way that he is sort of offering a spiritual family as an antidote to some of the most deep pains in the world is absolutely compelling to me. Like my ability to have a a meaningful life and people that care about me in in a secular world is all dependent on my ability to attract a mate and my ability to to have children physically. Whereas in the spiritual world, in, in, in Jesus' family, my ability to have people that care about me and to pour into people that, um, and to, to, to be a part, a meaningful part of children's lives is absolutely not dependent on anything in me. Mm. It's absolutely dependent on God's resurrection power to build, build a spiritual family, and I get a seat at the table. Mm. And I think that is absolutely stunning, mm. not just for me, but that is so much more compelling um, as a... As a picture of a way forward for a broken world than just, oh, I hope it works out for you, you know, or, or anybody else, not just me, you know. I think the other thing that's super compelling to me is both singleness and marriage have vital and essential roles in preaching the gospel to the world. Mm. Marriage, the way the marriage preaches the gospel is it preaches the depth of Christ's love for, for one person, like how deep and how committed that is. My role in being a single is I get to, I get to embody the breadth of Christ's love. Like the number of people that I can love well because of my singleness is, is that's just so compelling to me. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to keep going because I could. Amen. Amen. I was just going to say the answer to this question about what does being in a relationship with Jesus transform uh, your experience to think about singleness. Well, I think this you kind of think about what's the definition of love, right? And so this, this applies not just to singles, but also married people as well. 
is who's the author of love. Yeah. And so, you know, starting at the top, I think it's so important. Yeah. And, um, you know, how do you define love through the lens of faith versus the lens of the world? And I think for myself and speaking with them and just even single people I know in my life, it's, it's understanding who is the author of love. And so if you can get that from the top and apply that to your life, yeah. then if a single person gets married, you know, there's the foundation yeah. for your marriage. And so, you know, I would just encourage you, you know, just mm -hmm. seek the author of mm. who love is. Yeah. Two very, two, two last questions. One's kind of a quicker one. Um, the question that came in, in a culture that places so much pressure on sexuality, has anyone ever made assumptions about you? Uh, yes. Assumptions. Probably. Assumptions. Sure. Ab and the question was assumptions about your orientation. Yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. You guys are shooting for the fence here. All right. <laughs> I think we need like an honorarium or some food. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I actually I appreciate the sensitivity and the depth yeah. and the awareness of that question. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I think the assumptions. Oh yeah. And actually, if I can be really honest. Some of those assumptions have come from Christian friends. Right. And the, some of those assumptions have led to gossip in friends' circles. Yeah. And so my, 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 my gentle, loving rebuke would actually be for the church, mm. um, that we would repent mm. of our idolatry of marriage. Yeah. And our, ours too, singles too, but our, even our marrieds, like we would all repent of our idolatry of marriage and that we would believe the good news that Jesus is, Jesus is enough. Yeah. And, and it doesn't have to look this way or that way. Um, remind me of that when I need to hear it though. Um, and that's where like, yes, like, like come in and yeah. And so I, that has been a bad witness, I think. Yeah. Um, and a discouragement when I've, no, and I've heard, I've had some people say that to my face. I've heard rumors of that. Um, in, in some of my friend groups or whatever, and, and it's harmful. Yeah. Whether or not it's true, it's not helpful. <laughs> um, so but yeah. the flip side of that, the question is then, the other side of that is how can we honor singleness, single people? How can, how can us married people, and this is where I hope, I hope some of you married people just didn't kind of cash out today, just say, ah, this isn't for me. Because I, I hope you understand we have a responsibility and, and we want to do right by single people and, and do the right thing. We want to honor you. We want to support you. We want to pray for you. We want to help you. Did I just answer my own question? What can we do? What can we do? As a church? Yeah. Lots of ways. I think just being aware is key yeah. and, you know, being aware that there's a, a, such a diversity of, you know, people that go to church together, whether you're married or single. Um, and also recognizing that there's different kinds of single people here. You know, you get the happy single. You know, people are very content where they are. You get the ambitious single. I was one of those when I was a teenager, right? But then you have broken singles, you know, mm -hmm. people who may have lost their spouse because of COVID or... Um, yeah. maybe just going through a really messy divorce situation, but just recognizing, I think it's key. And also, you know, just to understand that everyone, everyone here is a child of God. You know, if you're in faith, you're a child of God. So I think we put all these labels as a society on things. It's like, you're Doug. I don't go up to and say, Hey, you're married, Doug, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so I think, I think labels can be, um, uh, counter counterintuitive. And I think it could be, um, the word I'm looking for, it could be not life-giving sometimes. Yeah. 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 Amen. yeah. I'd love to hear. Yeah. I think that, um, well, first I just want to acknowledge that I think that by having this, having us come up here and talk about being single, you know, I think that our church is doing a good job of, um, valuing that perspective, right? We all come at life from different perspectives. And I think that we're doing a really good job and I've seen it get better and better and better over the years of 
taking in other perspectives. Um, and so I think that I'm grateful that I'm in a church family that allows that. Um, I also think that, you know, when you were talking in the beginning about practical stuff about being single, one of the struggles about being single for me is asking for help. I mean, really, asking for help is hard. And even asking for help from the Lord sometimes, right? And um, I remember I had bees <laughs> in my yard, and I, I was mowing my lawn, and I got stung all over my hole everywhere from them. And I said, well, I don't know what to do about this. And Doug came over and helped in my yard and helped me figure out how to kill them and get the nest. And it's things like that that make me feel like, oh, I guess, you know, it is, it, I am valued. I, yeah. you know, I am, I, it, I, Benny, they have bee problems. I'm there <laughs> yeah. for you, okay? Yeah. There no, for really, you. That's but so, like <laughs> building, building yeah. furniture, you know, you get those um, <laughs> things, you know, you order something online and it's something that has to be built and, you know, I have to set aside an entire Saturday afternoon to like lay it all out. It like, stresses me out doing that stuff. But having to do those kinds of things alone. So, you know, I guess think about that. And if you see someone standing alone at church, you know, get out of your comfort zone and say, hey, how, how are you today? And I'm the worst at that. I mean, I, I don't, I'm an introvert and I don't like getting out of my comfort zone, but it's really, really important. It makes a, such a huge difference. It makes, Amen. it would make a huge difference. Amen. I think really quickly, I know we're at time, but um, I think it's similar to so many conversations. Like, my first thing would be, don't just let today be the, th the day that you talk about this. Right. You know, like this is not going to be one conversation that we all sit through that we're like, oh, great. I know about singleness now. <laughs> you know, like it's like anything. Like we're, we're about transformation. We're not about information. And so continuing to talk about it. A couple other things. Lynn, you made me think of this is that filter thing, filter, oh, of course we're going to do this through how would a single experience that? Honestly, simple blessings like that where I feel seen. Mm. There's a, this last Mother's Day, I, a gentleman, uh, mm. and he's a Christian, he's a wonderful Christian gentleman, said to me, he's like, and he, there was no guile in it. He just basically said, he's like, oh, is today a hard day for you? Or how do you take today? Because mm. I'm not a mother. And it was just such a beautiful picture of like, I have dear friends where that is hard for them. Mm -hmm. When people are like, oh, happy Mother's Day. And they just assume because you're a female that you're a mom and, and to be aware and to be seen. And even if that's not hard for me, it was just such a beautiful picture of like, hey, like Amen. leaving spacing open and you might, you know, it was, it was beautiful. I think the other thing, um, oh man, I had a thought. I, oh. Next service. Right. Come back next for the service. next service. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, um, would you thank this panel up here for me? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to end this in a word of prayer. Would everyone stand? Let's stand together. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for the privilege and opportunity we've had together to just uh, understand, to become aware and we thank you for every single child of God who has come into this place today and who's even watching online. And Father, we pray that you'll bless them through all of what has been uh, happening here this morning, that, uh, that you, Jesus, have been honored. We celebrate together the union that we have in you and with you, and you are enough. You're more than enough. We thank you, Jesus. It's in your great name we pray. Amen.